Hi guys, it's Debbie, and this is one of my favourite moments of the year, the one in which I get to share with you all the films I enjoyed watching the most. As every year, it's kind of impossible to get to see all the most promising movies in time for the video. For example, this year I haven't seen Knives Out yet, The Farewell, 1917, Little Woman, but compared to other years, this time I was on track. I actually managed to see most of the films that were on my watch list. The first film I'd like to speak about today is actually um, the most predictable and maybe obvious one because it basically received unanimous appreciation regarding most of its elements. Uh, so I'm going to cover it for first and then move on to more unpredictable films. Of course, I'm speaking of Joker. Joker is the story of Arthur Fleck, a guy who is dealing with a ton of issues in his life. He is struggling with very negative thoughts, he is having trouble at work, in his social interactions, he is living in a rundown apartment where he cares for his elderly mother, and all of this pressure slowly builds up to the point of making something flip. By the way, I know that even with all the other films on today's list, I'm going to sound pretty vague when explaining plot details because I don't want to spoil anything, so please excuse me if I sound vague or unclear. But further to the plot, Joker was beautiful for so many different things. First of all, Hakeem Phoenix's performance, which was breathtaking. We felt really angry for his character's choices, but also sad for him. We tried to understand him. Also because the film allows the viewers to form their own personal opinion on the topics. You can see it as society making Arthur Fleck become Joker. You can be disappointed or scared in belief. It all depends on the individual viewer's way of approaching the topics. There are lots of good performances out there this year, but Hacking Phoenix's one was just incredible. Some have criticised Joker as um, a copy of Taxi Driver or The King of Comedy, but I think that's something you could say more of the trailer, not of the, the actual film, because the plot goes way deeper with all the uh, ana analysis of Arthur's mind, of his life. It's not just some sort of tribute film. Also because the few elements of reference to those films, which you can see in the trailer, just briefly overlap. It's kind of the same concept of comparing Hacky Phoenix's Joker to Heath Ledger's Joker. It's just two different concepts and we don't always need to have to find something similar. I wish I could stay here and speak about Joker for hours. The, the, the music was anguishing, the photography was mesmerising. If you haven't seen Joker yet, this is the one 2019 film I would recommend watching. Don't worry if you aren't into the superhero genre, if you don't watch that kind of film, if you don't know anything about the Batman story, because this is a completely different concept. The next film I'd like to speak about is one that I actually watched a few months back without knowing anything about it. So I'm so pleased that that afternoon I chose to watch it because it is phenomenal. I'm speaking of Parasite, directed by Bong Joon-ho, who is mostly known for his more mainstream works such as Snowpiercer, Okjaya, The Host. But this time around, Parasite is the story of two families, one very wealthy family and one very poor family. Now when I say very wealthy, I mean Huge mansions packed with modern art and gigantic glass walls and house workers for every type of assistance wealthy. One of the members of this poorer family eventually gets a job as a private tutor for the wealthy family after faking a diploma. As he successfully manages to work in that rich environment, his whole family soon sees that this is their chance for a better life. But instead of regularly asking for a job, they basically start acting like parasites, making their way into the household through various ingenious, but in moral manners. And from that point onwards, the plot degenerates into a borderline horror story in which everything these parasites do avalanches into even worse consequences. The film has actually also been described as a dark comedy because it actually uh, treats the, the wealthy part of the story in a very comedic manner because they are presented as very naive, they don't realise what's going on. But at the same time, the story of how this, this poorer family infiltrates their life is presented in a very dark way and the film actually shows more than what the trailers reveal. So I'm not going to say anything more to not spoil anything, but if you have seen Parasite, please let me know what you thought about it. The next film I'd like to speak about is one that is completely different from all the other titles on today's list. It is a black and white film set in the 1800s in New England. It is The Lighthouse, starring Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. I fell in love with this film from the moment I first saw the trailer, which was so different from all the other hundreds of hot face posters and predictable storylines. It was a breath of fresh air. Although it does present old school material, 
but it's so weird and fascinating I had to get to see it and when I did I realized why I had been receiving so much appreciation. The Lighthouse is the story of two lightkeepers who are stranded on a cold blustery island. These guys are living in a very cramped space in terrible weather conditions with no particular comfort, their rations are limited, they are isolated and their mind starts to wander off in all the weirdest directions. This is especially hard for Robert Patterson's character who is a newcomer to that environment, he is struggling to adapt to the situation, to living with his grumpy co-worker. Everything in this film reminds you of those old stories about sailors, sea creatures, um, legends, mysteries, adventures, friendships. There's always this dark power of the sea, the darkness of the mind. The photography is unbelievable. There are some scenes which I just wanted to take and frame for my wall. And then you have these peak performances on behalf of Defoe and Patterson. They let their emotions free, they let all their instincts free, their conditions led them to behave more like animals than humans. There is a lot of shouting, weird thoughts creating weird behaviour, intense discussions and the delivery is fantastic. I really think that at some points Patterson just went full on uh, improvisation and he just went for it, just with, with spitting and crawling and shouting, you name it. Please don't associate Robert Patterson only with his teenage role of Edward in Twilight. I was recently reading some comments under uh, the trailer to Christopher Nolan's new film Tenet in which there will also be Robert Pattinson. And basically some people were saying, this looks so cool, but there's Robert Patterson in it, so it will suck. It's as if we all just stepped out uh, of high school as teenagers and we were immediately offered jobs as lawyers and doctors, and hedge fund managers. There was no in between. We never did anything that was less than that. But apparently that's what some people feel about Patterson. That role was one of his first roles ever. And it was basically impossible to improve it, even if instead of him there had been Leonardo DiCaprio or Daniel Day-Lewis. So I would definitely recommend checking him out in The Lighthouse. I know it screams pretentious, black and white, wannabe artsy indie film, but it definitely isn't. It's fantastic. The next film I'd like to speak about is one you can actually find on Netflix, and that is The Irishman, directed by Martin Scorsese. Now, The Irishman is a rather demanding film, so I know why it wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea. But setting all personal taste aside, even setting my personal taste aside, I still think that that film is objectively well put together. It's three hours and a half long and it follows along the lines of other Scorsese films which usually present epic stories, stories of a whole lifetime. There are intense dialogues, often with a big focus on correctly depicting specific cultural traits. So following along these lines, The Irishman is not the kind of film you would set up on your phone while you're baking a cake or just a film you would casually pick on a random evening for a light pastime. Even films like Goodfellas, The Departed, that cover similar themes, move along the plot much faster. But the fact that The Irishman is on Netflix means you don't have to commit to spending hours and hours and hours and hours at the cinema. You can just stop it when you like, you can watch it however you prefer. I know the cinema experience has that special something, but the pause button does come in handy here. The Irishman brings together three of the biggest names in the industry when it comes to epic crime films, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino and Joe Pesci. Robert De Niro portrays the real life character of Frank Sheeran, who went from selling meat to working for one of the largest mafia organizations in the United States. His contact in that world is a mobster portrayed by Joe Pesci, who assigns him to various jobs. One of these is to work alongside Jimmy Hoffa, Al Pacino, who needs a little assistance in his line of work. The film covers all the protagonist's life from when he was a young soldier to his much older years. So there's an impressive use of digital effects, but without solely focusing on that, it doesn't distract the viewer from the actual plot. The amount of information we have on the characters is mesmerizing. This is the story of a lifetime. So we obviously become very attached to the characters, not only in a positive manner, but in that manner that makes it feel so realistic. Now moving on from The Irishman, it's time to cover the last film on today's list, a position for which I was very undecided, but I think I'm going to go for Marriage Story. Out of all the films on today's list, it's the one I like the least, but if you, if you think of all the films of the year, that's a pretty high position. But I think I'm being just a little cautious because it's not my usual go-to style of film. But it's still a great movie. Marriage Story stars Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson as a New York couple who, after years of what appears to be a happy marriage, with the child, with various personal projects, start to fall apart. Things begin with a simple, it's not working out, maybe we have to split up, 
to progressively become more and more aggressive, lawyers are involved, there are a lot of breakdowns, and all of this brings the best out in the actors, especially Adam Driver. There are some scenes in which he is so broken that he is totally red, spitting while angrily swearing, then breaking down on his knees, sobbing into the carpet. It's not a happy story, but the way the two protagonists delivered it made it so convincing. And these are people that a few minutes earlier we didn't even know existed and now we we feel as if we know their whole life what they liked of each other how they fell in love and and we feel sad for them breaking up and that's something hard to feel about people we didn't even know so it never felt like just two random strangers fighting it was more a matter of uh, there used to be a big love and now it's not there anymore but it might still be there but it's not the thing we want in this moment that you are the person i hate most in my life but do i really or do i just want that a lot of things so as i was saying earlier this is not my go-to film but it is wonderfully made and it makes you realize how often the most down-to-earth stories are the most impactful i really hope adam driver's huge role in the star wars films as carl loren really pushes him more into the spotlight because he has made so many great films and he really deserves more attention. And with that, we have reached the end of today's list. Make sure to let me know what you think about all these films with a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite films of the year are. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye.